What's going on, boys and girls? It's Tom. And it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicle of 2003. 2023. cream so I can lick it <laughs> just to kill I've just had some hot sauce that's why I'm like ah! like the afterburn is really kicking in <laughs> can I have some of your coke I'm sorry yeah, didn't wait for an answer I'm having it anyway <laughs> how are you guys doing you okay burning do <laughs> you know what, actually I just I left my hoodie Sorry. That's right, no worries. The camera's just died. Oh, what? And yours. Yeah, we break everything. We break everything wherever we go. <laughs> no, it'd, be fun. it'd be all good, it'd be all good. Um, enjoy your set earlier today? Yeah, it was loads of fun. It was amazing, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It must be quite daunting looking at your theme, you know, on like midday. Because obviously on a Thursday as well, like, no one's going to be awake. No one's, you know, going to be hanging out their ass for the, the first time. But... The most daunting thing was yesterday, looking at what time I had to get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Once I'd got over that, it was a breeze. So, did you guys travel down today or were you here yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Today. Today. We left at 6.30 this morning. Oh. oh. Disgusting. To be fair, we were up a bad time, thank We were up all night because of the uh, silent disco people. Well, Bless them. You can be. Yeah. Well, I mean, the sun's going to wake you up. Like, well, yeah. Oh, there is that. But being woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning, my people singing chop suey, horribly out of tune, was just uh, yeah, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, are you guys staying around or are you heading back after today? No, we're here for the day, but no heading on. Are you checking anyone else out now? <laughs> yeah, going to watch Svalbard. I can't wait for Skin Dread. Yes. Just found a skin dread. Um, uh, Bat Sabbath. I think that, that's my plan for this evening. Very good plan. We were fortunate, guys. We got to check you guys out earlier. Absolutely phenomenal. The, the tent were loving it as well. Like, so damn good. I was really, look, you were one of the bands on my list of people to see this weekend. So, so damn good. How did it, how was it for you guys being up there? How was it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like, as you said, like at 12 o'clock, nobody you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is anyone going to turn up? And like, we had, uh, had a full tent, like, having, yeah, having loads of fun. It's a weird one, I say 12 o'clock on a Thursday, like, it should be in the office or something, not, not stuck in a tent in a field. Yeah, I mean, that'd be me tomorrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to work, back to real life. Oh, boo, rubbish. <laughs> I mean, your vocals rates are insane. Like, the power. The, the growls, it, it just absolutely blew me away. Like absolutely phenomenal. It's, yeah, I was just, it, I've never, I've never experienced you guys before, so that was the first time for me. And it's the power that I felt was just like fucking hell, <laughs> like, like unbelievable. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know how you get that deep. I don't even know. How, it's just like a superpower almost. Absolutely incredible. Eggs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, legs. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had three eggs this morning. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the eggs. Right. Mental notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously you played today at the festival. How, what's the difference in preparation like for a gig of your own and then to play at a festival? Is it a completely different mentality going in or is it just same day, another day at the office, let's go. Uh, I have beer at different times maybe. <laughs> I got a beer at 11 o'clock this morning, so in fact, my festivals like this we play earlier are really bad for my health. I, um, um, I don't know, like festivals though, it's like, it's like a throw and go thing. It's like, once you turn up, like, throw it on stage, great line check, go. It's a lot less work than your own thing, because you've got a sound check and take it really seriously, whereas here you don't really care. You just like, oh, it's very quick, you just throw it and go. And do you know what? I quite like that. Yeah. You're not the first band to say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, you know, when you play a headline show, you've got a sound check in the afternoon. Then you've got like the whole, like five hours of waiting to play. And I, it's easy, just get a go and turn in one go and then go and have some fun. Yeah, arrive a bit late, play immediately, Yeah, yeah, we, we, we arrived just over an hour before stage because we got stuck in loads of traffic. We still left at half past six, but like, the traffic was awful. And then to be fair, in the car was a little bit like, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then when we got here, it was just like, oh, okay, here we are, let's get it. Yeah, get on, sound check, pay a bit, go. Go on, happy, yeah. happy days. Beauty. So, we love talking to bands at festivals because what we 
talking to people at festivals and stuff like that, they all say that a festival is very much like a family feel. Like you walk in, you can see people you've never met before. You're like, hey, it's you, let's have a beer. You know, everyone just seems to get along. There's no animosity around. Do you feel that when you're on stage? Like everyone's just there together having fun. It's, it's Oh, yeah, you're there with your people, aren't you? Yeah, it's all I mean, people that like the same music, like the same vibe. Like, if you don't know somebody, the chances are that if you've met them, you'd probably really like them. Yeah. Like, everyone here is super lovely, and it's like, we're in the environment. You know, it's like a little safe haven for us all, alternative way out. <laughs> exactly that. It's it's that it's that safe haven feeling free to be who you are because we're ambassadors for the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. I, I don't know if you know of Sophie's yeah, story, but yeah. Uh, we played the Kate Fight stage. We played the Sophie stage at Bloodstock last year. Yes, you did. I remember. I really wanted to go, but we had a news box and I missed you. I was gutted. But yeah. So it, I think festivals like this are so important because people can just come, let their hair down. Even the men can let their hair down. You know, you want to wear nail varnish, put nail varnish. You want to wear a skirt, put a skirt on. Doesn't matter. Be yourself. People aren't going to judge you. I think, judge you exactly. Yeah, and I think it's so important for people's mental health just have that safe space a way where they could just be themselves not worried about someone throwing abuse at them in the street for once. Yeah, yeah. I think today, today is like a cutest festival. It's so nice that there's kids everywhere. There's people dressed in things we don't even know. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So cool. Did you see the girl in this yeah. crazy green outfit? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was amazing. I don't, I don't even know what that was. She was like an know. alien. I love her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look amazing. You do you. <laughs> you say that about kids, when we were watching you guys towards the back, there was a little girl on her mum's shoulders, ear defenders on, just rocking out, going nuts. I was like, yes, four year old. This is awesome. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> I think it's amazing because it is, it shows the next generation that, you know, the safe places for you. Be like, yourself. And do you know what, like, I mean, I've been around on the scene for quite a while. And do you know what is absolutely lovely is when you do come to things like this and you do see loads of young people, it makes you realise that you know this is something, this isn't just a flash in the pan scene. Yeah, and I, you know, I grew up basically listening to heavy metal in the 90s when I was a teenager. And, um, and now we're like, well, two decades later and you see young kids still loving rock and metal, all sorts of music. And it's, it just makes you realise it's more than just like a thing that you do as your kids. It's like a lifestyle. Like, we're all in this together and the next generation's coming through and it's exciting. It's amazing, it's absolutely amazing. But talking of things coming up, you've announced you're going on tour with Necrogoblicon in, the, in the September, I saw. Yep. How are you feeling about that? Excited? Yeah, they're absolutely lovely dudes. I've known those guys for quite some time and they're, they're just the most fun, lovely, hilarious people. And um, I guess musically it's like, I don't know, I think vibe-wise it's going to work. Musically, like it's, uh, I don't know, they're, although they've got their comedy metal band, I feel like that their audience is going to be very, very open-minded and fun, rather than like metal elitists or hardcore elitists that judge yes. And so I do think that it's actually going to be a really, really great tour of really open-minded people. And the band are lovely, and I think it's going to be a great experience. It's good, yeah. Um, you released your debut album last May. Have we got anything new coming up? Anything you could allow to talk about? Anything? <laughs> about the music dreams. Oh, oh, nice, uh, yeah, we are we are working on some team works. Yeah. They've got like sort of a whole bunch of ideas. And kind of want to we want to get like a bulk of an album sorted by the end of the year. That's alright. We'd, like, okay. we'd like a record next year. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely Love it. incredible. This has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have it, you all too. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.